all righty folks welcome back to my channel i hope you all are doing okay uh, covid and lockdown has been difficult and tough for all of us even after my return from sikkim uh, that was in mid march i have been mostly confined to my home not venturing out much and since we can't fly anywhere in real world let's try that in simulator so what i have right now with me is a flight simulator uh, 2020 edition developed by microsoft it's an excellent application if you want to learn some essence of flying i mean you're not going to be becoming a real pilot just learning on this but it's get, it gets you close and uh, the sim the kind of controls and the feature it presents it mimics the real world experience let me give you an example if suppose i select uh, my flight from say sydney to seattle and sydney to seattle takes say for example somewhere around 16 hours you will have to be here monitoring your plane monitoring your autopilot for that 16 hour yes you cannot escape this this is not a miniature version of real world flights all right so yeah it's a great application i am loving it uh, there are some bugs with it yes uh, it's fine because it's a very complicated application it uh, the size of this application is around 104 gb on my pc so you can imagine how big of this application is all right so enough talking about the application uh, let me walk you through uh so this is the home page uh i can do bunch of things here i can see my profile i can see the marketplace and uh, yeah one more thing uh this is a standard version uh, there is a gold version also that includes more feature more uh, airport option i guess and more aircraft option obviously this is my option in assistant i have selected as custom but it is almost similar to all assist mode wherein uh the system takes care of most of the stuff uh, i just need to focus more on flight controls so anyone new coming to this uh should first go through the flight training we have general aviation training here uh, you can learn uh to fly a small turbo prop single engine aircraft there are a bunch of options here like basic controls take off landing traffic pattern first solo flight uh it teaches a good amount of uh, stuff to whoever is trying this sim for the first time but still what we are more interested in is uh airline training uh but the issue is with airline training i see only two things present one is take off one is landing not much here so and landing here is uh, more on the visual landing uh, not on the ils ils is something which i have learned by myself uh, by seeing lot of youtube tutorials and other thing i'll come to that later let's go to home we have activities we have landing challenges and bush trip bush trip is nothing but uh, flying aircraft to very remote destination with very small runways sometime even unpaved runways and uh, in landing challenges we have multiple type of challenges one is normal like uh, flying just boeing 747 landing this in new york or say this airbus a320 in rio then uh, we have epic challenges where you can fly to remote locations which are the landing where the landing is very difficult to perform take for example this lukla so lukla is in nepal uh this airport this very small hill town is actually known as gateway to mount everest uh, climbers generally fly to lukla and they start their uh, base camp trek to everest base camp uh, that takes them around 7 or 8 days so the runway here is just 550 meters just 550 meters that's it there is no option of uh, aborting a landing or maybe performing a go around when you are landing uh so yeah i mean this is epic challenge and then you have a strong wind where you have to perform the landing in strong wind conditions 
Today uh, we are gonna plan our flight. Let's go to world map. Now, as I already said, right, uh, the duration zone here from one airport to another airport uh, mimics the real world condition. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select a very short uh, flight path, which is from Abu Dhabi. Let's say Abu Dhabi International Airport. Yes. And I'm gonna fly to Dubai. So I need to be careful. I have to select Dubai International. Okay, so this is my departure, my arrival. I can choose to select uh, my starting from point from some gate uh, where generally the aircraft will be parked, but I will for now I'll leave it at uh, runway. So the sim will start from the runway itself. So let's select 31L. I'm gonna select here low altitude airways because since the duration and distance is not that much, I don't need to gain that much altitude. So selecting low altitude airways. Okay. Uh, arrival, I'm gonna make it ILS. 30R. Now let's see my flight path. Uh, it says approx duration will be 15 minutes, which is good. I want to make this video short that's why and this is my flight path uh, here first waypoint second waypoint and then I have to make the final approach to line up with the runway and I'm gonna perform an ILS approach instrument landing system uh, this is a basically radio based approach where the aircraft tries to land by itself you just have to configure it properly you just have to monitor the all the parameters of the aircraft at that time Okay, uh, all these things selected. Now, let's select the flight condition. So right now, obviously it's night time in uh, UAE also. So let me make it, uh, yeah, I think 10.30 should be fine for, uh, it will be a morning time in UAE. And I can choose to have live weather, uh, the current weather of that area. Yes, it works with live weather also, but let's, for the sake of this video, I'll choose clear skies. So that it's afternoon and the sky will be clear. And there won't be much wind. Okay, so this is selected. Let's go back. So let's check it once again. 31L, departure. Uh, Abu Dhabi International, Dubai International, arrivals and I approaches this ILS 30R. All right, uh, I will leave my plane at this Airbus A320neo. I can choose my liveries. Uh, this yellow one looks good. Let's choose this. I can uh, input these kind of parameters also, like how much weight it will have, how much fuel it will carry and all those things. I can even mimic failure scenarios, something like maybe say if there is fire in your engine and how will you handle it you can yes you can uh, simulate these scenarios there are other customization option like you can change your tail number and you can change your call sign i think the call sign for these aircraft by default is asx1 or 320 that is alpha sierra x-ray 320 okay so Let's close this. I think all things, all parameters are set. Let's fly. It takes a while to load. Uh, I'm running this simulator in medium graphic setting because I have uh, NVIDIA GTX 1660 Ti in my laptop which is mid-spec graphics card. That is why I have to run this in medium setting. I've also tried this in uh, higher setting. Sometimes it works fine, but sometimes it lags. Tower Airbus Alpha Sierra, X-ray 320 at runway 31 left, ready for departure IFR to Dubai. Airbus Alpha Sierra, X-ray 320 altimeter, 29er, decimal niner, 2.269er at tree. Cleared for takeoff runway 31 left. All right, so this is my flight. Okay, my flight is lining up on the runway. Uh, my cruise speed is 455 knots. Max altitude, it can go to 39,800 feet. Endurance and range is selected as 
unlimited fuel uh, but this can vary I can change that if I want to visibility is fine time is this wind is 2 knots very manageable altitude we are at 74 feet above sea level okay, let's go ahead click on ready to fly So this is my cockpit, this is the cockpit of Airbus A320 and this is how in real also the A320 cockpit looks like, I mean it's basically the same. Most of the controls here are operable, uh, some are not because I am playing in all assist mode, I already said it. Uh, but if you want you can choose uh, hardcore mode where everything will be manual you have to control each and everything okay so since this is not a real airport so I can be at this runway for a bit longer so let's walk you through around the cockpit itself and all the controls now uh, it will keep prompting me some of the missiles so I am gonna ignore it Okay, so here in this, uh, I can see all the instructions I have from the ATC. I can choose to close it. Uh, this is the controls I can play around while uh, running the simulator. Uh, this is my ATC. It brings this pop-up. Uh, this is my camera control. If I want, I can have external view and I can rotate this as well. And then there are a bunch of other options like basic control, I can have AI control, travel to, uh, I can even, you know, like tinkle with weather while running the simulator. So right now it is clear sky, if I want to make it rain, I can do that as well. Now it is raining and the visibility is very less. I think I can make it a snowfall also <laughs> in UAE. Okay, so it's snowing in UAE right now. Okay, enough fun. Let's go back to clear skies. And let's move again back to cockpit. Okay. So this is my side stick. Uh, Airbus planes generally will have a joystick kind of flight control for maintaining the attitude, which is pitch, roll and yaw. Uh, Boeing will generally have a yoke. This is my primary flight display, PFD. This shows the speed, uh, which is in knots. This is altitude. Uh, right now, it is almost at 0, 0. And this one will indicate the vertical speed. So if this green bar is above the yellow one, uh, that means I am gaining altitude. If this comes below this, that means I am losing altitude. This one here is my navigational display, also known as ND. Uh, it tells me about the heading. Okay, now uh, the runway is 30 R and my heading it says somewhere is around 30.5. This There could be a bug, I am not sure, but this yellow one should be at 30. The same heading as the runway number. Okay, I can even change the scale of ND. Now this becomes up to 20 knots. Max it goes up to 320 knots. Okay, so this means from here to here it is basically 320 knots. So let's bring it back and dial down to 20. I'll keep it 20. Okay, uh, my flight director is on. I'll come to flight director. Let's go to autopilot. Okay, so this is my uh, airspeed control. Uh, if I want, I can have it in manage speed mode or I can select my own speed and I can have leave it to that speed. This is my heading, which heading I want to go to. Uh, I will leave it at managed heading mode because that is already fed into flight director. Autopilot I'm gonna switch on once I have taken off and I have crossed maybe around 2000 feet. And this is my altitude marker. So ATC will provide me the information at which altitude I had to fly and I will select that at particular time, okay? As soon as my flight is airborne, auto thrust will be enabled so that uh, the thrusts are automatically maintained by the flight. I won't have to uh, worry about maintaining the proper thrust. Let's come to engine stats. Okay, this pop-up is coming again and again. Anyways, both my engines are idling right now. 
okay uh, my flap is already set to one because you can see uh, one dot and this one is set here if I set my flaps to two okay so I think because of all assist mode it is not letting me to go to uh, flap two anyways no worries let's come back here yeah so and it talks about uh, the fuel I'm carrying right now in both of my wings okay now let's come to flight director this is the most important thing flight plan I have my waypoints listed up if autopilot is not picking up this fly uh, waypoints from flight director I will have to input it by manually this is my destination and if I see my radio navigation, it says ILS is already set at 30R with radio frequency already there. Okay, my performance is uh, my V1 is 140, my VR is 146. VR is basically the rotation speed 146 knots, where I am gonna pull my side stick and the plane will be airborne. Okay, uh, let's keep it at flight plan. This is fine. Uh, let's go to. Uh, yeah, so this is my throttle, throttle for engine 1, throttle for engine 2, currently it's at idle. Both engines are on, so I don't have to worry about these two buttons. Okay, uh, so what are we going to do right now? Since we are at an international airport with pretty long runway, uh, what I'm going to do is, I'll have my starting throttle at flex detent, which is basically for takeoff. Toga is also used for takeoff and also go around. Uh, generally, if the runway is short, so you need maximum thrust from your engine, that is why you have Toga. Or maybe during the go around, you need to gain height much faster, uh, that is why we have this detent. Climb detent, once uh, we are airborne, uh, auto thrust is going to bring the lever back to climb detent and it will be there for most of the flight. Alright, uh, I don't worry, have to worry about a speed brake for now. Flaps is already set to position 1, but after uh, gaining some altitude, it will go to flaps 0th position. Okay, my squawk code is 1456. A squawk basically identifies uh, aircraft. It provides a unique number to an aircraft so that it, it gets uh, displayed as a separate, a unique aircraft in the radars of ATC and in different aircrafts as well. This section here is for radio controls. Uh, with all assist mode, I don't have to worry about these things. This, these gets changed automatically once the ATC instruction comes in. That is basically the system is taking care of changing it. And this is the last area. Uh, I don't have to do anything here in all assist mode because if suppose I have to simulate engine fire, then maybe these buttons will come into play. But right now it's inoperant. And there are a bunch of lights which obviously all assist mode takes care of putting off or on so I don't have to worry about these things all right I think we are good to go uh, so let me do one thing the first thing I have to do here is I have to release the parking brake okay, parking brake is uh, now released let me set the proper camera perspective Okay, now I can see the runway, I can see my PFT, and I can see the throttle as well. So I think we can go. The first thing I'm going to do is, I'm going to move side stick to slightly forward position to keep the nose down until unless we are airborne. Okay, so I have already moved it. Now let's increase the throttle. Good, it's moving. Now move it to flex detent. Okay. It will prompt me for takeoff once it reaches 145 knots. it has come to climb detent I will put my gear up that is landing gear 
is gonna make sure that I am going at correct heading and my altitude is at 16,000 feet ok so let's check it once again uh, air speed is rising it has to go to 250 which is fine uh, plane is turning it will go to the uh, this heading it will come up it will stabilize in few seconds autopilot and auto thrusts are on flight director is on landing gear is up One is small issue. Let's move this throttle to climb detail. And my flaps are up. Nice. Okay, so we are climbing, which is good. Now one funny thing is, inside you will see there are no occupants on these seats, but if I move to outside. Let's zoom in. You can see my captain and my first officer both are occupying these seats. I hope Microsoft corrects this in maybe next iteration, uh, but yeah. <laughs> That is something I really see that some person, some guy is sitting on that chair. Anyways, uh, even from outside, uh, I can see some of important information here. I like see I'm gaining the altitude. My vertical speed is 3370. Air speed is 248 knots around. And both engine are operating at somewhere around 800% of its melted here. And you can see the liver is at climb detent. The attention to detail in this game on the geography, terrain is really good. I mean, if you want, you can even fly to Mount Everest and I'm gonna bring that video very soon, maybe after this one. Uh, you can see Abu Dhabi below me. This is the UAE deserted area. And I hope uh, we will get to see Burj Khalifa and Burj Al Arab also when we'll be approaching Dubai. have sun here and there is also shade of moon coming up here. Nice. Okay, let's go back to cockpit mode. Alright, we are still turning. Let's check our flight director. Okay, so we are going to this uh, donkey waypoint. Okay, uh, let's check our performance. We are holding at 280. Uh, we need to come to this one, this uh, magenta diamond which is showing up. Uh, altitude is still, we are still climbing. Uh, we are almost level with the horizon. Because I selected 16,000 feet, this one is showing up here. That this is the indicated altitude we had to come to.
Okay, this might also be some kind of bug. I am not sure. I have selected terrain on ND. It should have shown me the terrain map here. It should have brought it, but it hasn't. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Just let me put it. Okay, we are almost approaching Dubai now. Descent and maintain uh, 9,000 feet. Airbus 320. 9,000 feet we have to go. Okay, let's see this ND. Uh, okay, this is almost uh, 30 knots. After Emru, we have to go to Overev, that is 30 knots. Then we have to make a right turn, lose some altitude, decel, L dot, and after L dot, it's the Dubai, uh, that runway, what was that, 30, 29 something, I forgot, one second. 30, yeah, yeah. We are losing altitude. This green indicator has gone down. These are man-made islands of Dubai. Yeah, I think okay. We are almost approaching Dubai. Uh, I'm not sure which side that will be. I think north side. Okay. Climb and maintain 16,000 feet. Airbus 320. All right, folks, now you heard that, right? ATC is asking me to climb 16,000 feet, which is not needed exactly. It will keep prompting me uh, to expedite climb, but I don't have to in this scenario because again, I assume that it's kind of a bug. I mean, when you are almost approaching an airport where you have to land your destination, you are not gonna gain that much height. So this is one of the bug which this game has, this simulator has. Okay, so I'll leave it at 9,000 feet. I I will not do that, even if it keeps prompting me. Airbus 320, contact Dubai approach on 120.25. 120.25 for Airbus 320. 120, okay. Dubai approach Airbus uh, Alpha Sierra, X-ray 320 is at 9,400 feet, climbing 16,000 feet. Okay, okay, so this is as 120.25. Okay, so this is as 120.250. I'll can see one of the important Dubai towers here. Very soon Burj Al Arab will come into picture. Let's wait for some time. There you go. It asked me to again uh, to climb to 16,000 feet, which obviously I'm not gonna do. Yeah, there it is, Burj Al Arab. Princess Tower. Okay. So you heard it right. Now it is asking me to go to 3000 feet. Descent and maintain 3000 feet. Keep speed not above 185 knots. Expect ILS runway 30 right approach via Alden transition cleared to Alden Airbus 320. I'm going to 3,000 feet. Uh, let's check my flight director. Okay, yeah, it will go to all dot transition. Uh, flight 3,000 feet. Okay, let's check my ND. Okay, 
so it's gonna fly straight make a left u-turn and then it will line up with the runway uh, I still have some time before I enable my approach but anyways uh, ATC control can also be found here if you want to request something if you're not sure you can request like something like this request vector to next waypoint which works like this Dubai approach Airbus Alpha Sierra X-ray tree 20 requesting vector to next waypoint Airbus 320 continue to all turning and following heading 045 so it will tell about heading 045 in this case Continue to hold at turning and following heading 045 Airbus 320. This also seems like an airport with a small runway. Okay, so this is Burj Khalifa. It will become visible on runway approach as well. That sound of engine thrust increasing and decreasing is something which uh, this auto thrust will take care of. Depending upon how much performance it needs, it varies the thrust in both engines. Let's turn on the ILS info display. These bars have come up. Okay, so let's prepare the flight for landing now because we will be lining up with the runway. Uh, first thing I need is let's bring it down to 180. Okay, let me arm the speed brake. I need to enable auto brake, let it set to medium, that should be fine. Okay, I'll put the landing gear down once I have below 2000 feet. Okay, the flight is now making final turn. I think I can now uh, select this approach mode on. Okay, now let's check my PFT. Alright, so this magenta should align with this yellow line which will tell me that yes, I am aligned with the runway. And this magenta diamond should align with this yellow so that I am maintaining correct altitude. is done Sharjah airport but we are not landing here Airbus 320 you are 15 miles southeast of Dubai Contact Dubai Tower on 119 or decimal 05 when inbound on the approach. Okay, so we have lined up with the runway. Tower on 119 or decimal 05, Airbus 320. Dubai Tower, Airbus Alpha Sierra X ray 3201, miles southeast, inbound ILS runway 30 right approach. Okay, so that's my runway up ahead. Airbus Alpha Sierra X ray 320, Dubai Tower. Altimeter 29 or decimal 9 or 2 and 269 or a tree. Clear ILS runway 30 right approach. 
I see another aircraft as well. Clear ILS runway 30 right approach Airbus 320. Not sure if that is taking off or landing. Anyways, uh, let's reduce the speed. Should be 160. And I need to change the flaps to 1. Okay, so my range finder has turned blue, which says I am going fine. If it will turn to red, then I am not on the right path. So, altitude will now start to decrease steadily uh, while maintaining this magenta diamond on the yellow line and we are lined up with the runway. Now again, uh, there could be a hit and miss because this is a simulator, not exactly a real life scenario. But we'll see how the landing happens. And there you go, Burj Khalifa. This yellow and red means that if I go to this speed, uh, the plane will stall and it will start falling off on the ground to the ground. Okay, so we are below 200 feet. Airbus 320, follow the generic on final. Wind 269 are at tree. Clear to land runway 30 right. Let me put down the landing gear. Clear to land runway 30 right, Airbus 320. Okay, so. Let's reduce the speed further to 145, which is the landing speed. And let me select the flaps to landing. I need to go around now. Going around Airbus 320. Because there was Airbus 320 contact Dubai approach on 120 decimal 25. There was another aircraft on the runway. 120 decimal 25 for Airbus 320. And now I need to go around, so let's put it in toga mode. Dubai Landing approach Airbus up. Alpha Sierra X-ray tree 20 is missed approach at Dubai. Climb and maintain 4,000 feet. Keep speed not above 185 knots. Expect ILS runway 30 right approach. Five old at transition clear to old at Airbus 320. Okay, folks. So that was a missed approach, and I had to make a go around because there was a another aircraft on my designated runway. Okay, I didn't knew the system can uh, present me such kind of challenge as well. So yeah, I mean I'll have to make these waypoints again. Uh, so let me skip to that part where I'm gonna perform the landing. Okay, so here we are back again following the same waypoint. Setting auto brake to medium. I'll have to perform all the steps again uh, which is not a problem that's okay 
aircraft is lined up properly. Airbus 320. Hope no other aircraft comes on my runway again. Echo 112 contact departure on 121.025. Going to 121.025 Azole 112. This screw needs to be lined up with the runway. It says that yeah, the aircraft is exactly lined up with the runway. Landing. Coming nice and smooth. Hard right. test on, but it's okay for a novice like me. Breaking the aircraft, reverse thrust is on. Okay, speed below 40 knots. I can bring throttle to idle. Airbus 320 turn next taxiway. Throttle to idle. Cool. Okay, so I have to follow this blue marker uh, to go to the parking gate, uh, but we can stop here. Not a problem. Airbus 320 contact ground on 118.85. So that's the place where I'll have to go. But it's okay. 118.85 so yeah, for Airbus 320. Uh, after one weird go around, uh, I have finally managed to land this plane with ILS approach. And that is how in a normal condition, in a favorable condition generally what pilots will do. Alright, so thank you so much guys for watching this video. I hope you really liked it and I hope you will also go ahead and try this simulator. And if you really liked it, please give us a thumbs up, click on that like button and please do subscribe to my channel. Thank you and I'll see you in my next video which I'll be covering the Mount Everest part.